Good evening, everyone. So good to see so many of you here tonight. It's 7.04 p.m. and I am calling the April meeting of the Altadena Town Council to order. I am going to turn this meeting over to Council Member Sutherland to introduce our flag salute. Thank you. The leader of our flag salute tonight is Faye Hazlitt. Faye is a, is a sophomore at Muir High School, a resident of Altadena and my census tract and a finalist for Congresswoman Judy Chu's annual Artistic Discovery Congressional Competition, which is a mouthful. This is sponsored by members of Congress to promote and recognize the artistic achievements of high school students. Faye's art for the, compet Faye's art for the competition was inspired by her grandmother who died a few months ago. Carol Hazlitt was a Republic of Vietnam nurse during the Vietnam War. Her recent death from lung cancer was due to her exposure when treating the soldiers who had been exposed to Agent Orange during the war. At the end of her life, Faye's grandmother lived with Faye and her family, and she got, as she got to know her grandmother, Faye discovered that she was an inspiration and one of the strongest people she has known. This, her painting, is her way of, process, of processing the loss. I can personally relate to Faye's work of art since my own grandmother, Annie Sullivan, died when I was Faye's age after living with us, hospital bed included, for several years before her death. It was only after she died that I learned about her own strength in her younger years. I'm so glad that Faye was able to know Carol Hazlitt which enabled her to produce this inspiring and personal work of art. And I know Faye is here, so if you come up to the podium. Um, all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Place your right hand over your heart and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Faye, hang on just one second. We've got something for you. And Reggie, you have something for her too. And I wanted to acknowledge Webster's Pharmacy, who provides the glasses for us and wraps them so beautifully for those who do the flag salute. And we wanted to present you with a certificate from the town council congratulating you on your honorable mention. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, moving on to roll call. Council Member Sutherland. Okay. Council members, listen up and answer when your name is called, please. Um, Connor Cipolla. Present, just barely. <laughs> Victoria Knapp. Present. Nick Arnson. Present. Kim Yu. Present. Melissa Morona. Present. Yeah. Dorothy Wong. Here. John Carmody. Present. Chris O'Malley. Here. Rob Bryce. Jafina Hall. Present. Alan Peck. Right here. Pat Sutherland's here. Reginald Wilkins. Present. Doug Cauliflower. Here. Diane Markison. Here. And Sylvia Vega. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Thank you, Council Member Sutherland. We're going to approve the meeting agenda. Vice Chair Arnzen. Thank you. Good evening, fellow council and community members. There's agendas on the back table, as well as public comment cards. The council welcomes input from the community on both agendized and non-agendized items. If you would like to make a public comment, please fill out a card on the back table and give it to a council person on either end of these tables. While the council does not respond to public comment during the meeting, if you would like a response, please include your contact information on those cards. Public comments are limited to two minutes. These guidelines are in place to ensure that everyone wishing to make public comment has the time to do so. 
and that we can conduct the meeting in an orderly fashion. Council members, the Altadena Town Council Executive Committee met on Tuesday, April 9th to set the agenda for tonight's meeting. The agenda was circulated to you on Thursday, April 11th. I received no changes or corrections. Um, I did receive two this evening. Uh, we will not have Judy Matthews from Chamber of Commerce, so you can strike 4.2. And there will not be a legislative up, uh, report. You can strike 6.4. Other than those, are there any other changes or corrections? Seeing none, I move that we, uh, I move that we, the agenda be approved with said changes. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone abstaining or not approving? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you so much, council member. I'm just gonna ask that those that are here uh, silence your cell phones if you haven't already done so, and those that are up here as well. Thank you so much. Um, in terms of my chair report, an ongoing concern of the executive committee has been the continued absence of two council members due to personal reasons. First and foremost, we are compassionate to their issues and we wanna show them our support and well wishes. That said, their extended ab absences renders their census tracts underrepresented. I wanna recognize that we have a number of important townwide issues that may come before this council in the coming months requiring fair and equitable input from across all census tracts. After discussion with both council members, we received and I have accepted the resignation of Council Member Peck from Census Tract 4611. We recognize his service and dedication to this council and Land Use Committee and wish him the very best. The Executive Committee established there is a need to create three additional committees, two that I will mention here and one that Vice Chair Arnzen will relay. The West San Gabriel very the West San Gabriel Valley area plan is being updated. We recognize the need for a committee to review the plan, report back, and summarize it for the full council. The decision to form a council committee dedicated to the West San Gabriel Valley area plan was based on the importance of the plan in its size and scope. The hope is that a committee can dig through the plan on behalf of the council and report back on the aspects and elements that most affect Altadena. While the committee will be taking on this work, individual council members are obviously still able to review the plan on their own and are encouraged to take part in the committee or attend community meetings. Council member Morona will chair this committee. Secondly, we will immediately proceed with a special election for the now vacant seat in Census Tract 4611. Council member O'Malley will chair this committee. I thank both council members for their willingness to chair these committees. I will turn it over now to council member Arnzen for his vice chair report. Thank you, chair. At the April 9th executive committee meeting, besides setting the agenda for tonight's meeting, we also discussed a wide variety of topics that I wanted to pass along to my fellow council members. Uh, first of all, thanks to Rotary Club and their upcoming pancake breakfast in June, the ATC will have funds raised and a survey will be sent out to full council to vote on their choices for use of those funds. Please look out for that. We will vote on that in May. The council will be celebrating its 50th anniversary in October 2025. While this may seem far off, it's a big milestone, deserves thoughtful planning on how to market. Therefore, we're announcing the formation of an Altadena Town Council 50th anniversary celebration committee. We are looking for a chair and anyone interested in chairing should reach out to Chair Knapp or me. There are three upcoming events we're looking forward to having an ATC presence at. <clears throat> I'll remind the council there are three sign-ups out to you. If you have a chance and haven't already, thank you for those that did. Please sign up for the upcoming home, Altadena Guild Home Tour, the Sheriff Station Open House, and the Rotary Club Pancake Breakfast in June. We believe these are great opportunities for the ATC to show support and engage with residents and hope you will make, take a shift to do so. This past year, as my fellow council members, most of you know, has been a little tricky to staff these kind of events. And in part, that's due to the aforementioned 
absence of a couple of council members, um, which leads me to another discussion at last week's EC meeting. Um, Chair Knapp already noted the council has been dealing with extended absences in two census tracks. Council Member Peck of Track 4611, as mentioned, has resigned. Council Member Bryce of Census Track 4610 continues his absence and is choosing not to vacate his seat. While we continue to empathize with and are certainly compassionate to his situation, we do need to address the consequences brought about by this extended absence. For reference, that track is at the southwest corner of Altadena, essentially all of the Altadena area uh, west of Fair Oaks and south of Ventura. The executive committee agrees his absence isn't fair to the residents of 4610, and that's a historically disenfranchised section of our town. His fellow council, uh, census tract council member, um, Jeffina Hall, other potential candidates that reside in that tract and would be honored to serve on the council or the council and land use committee as a whole. On numerous occasions, we have been nearly one member shy of a quorum to be able to take votes. And absent or non-participatory council members put a big burden on the full council when we need to conduct due diligence on land use items and would like to be present at community events. <clears throat> the biggest issue is the proper and full attention given to 4610 and their fair representation on this council. For example, just last month, if you recall, we had a member of the community express that very concern in public comment. Council Member Bryce was sworn in at the January 2023 meeting and since then has only, only been able to attend one of the last 14 meetings. It brings up two main issues. One, the review of our bylaws to address, potentially address leaves of absences. And two, without that type of procedure in place and with Council Member Bryce choosing not to relinquish his seat, what is our best step forward to be sure his census tract is represented in the best capacity. I'm just gonna quick remind the council that our bylaws state, in the case of excessive absenteeism, a motion to consider action against a member will be immediately referred to the executive committee for deliberation and determination. The executive committee will then present its findings and recommendations to the council panel. A motion to remove for excessive absenteeism will require a two-thirds vote of the voting council members present. And secondly, our bylaws describe extensive absenteeism as non-attendance amounting to three regular meetings of the town council within a 12-month period without an excuse acceptable to a majority of the executive committee. Tonight, we'll mark council member Bryce's fourth unexcused absence in the past 12-month period. In that same period, he has not attended any council meetings. I'm going to finish by saying that the committee, the executive committee, takes the troubles of our fellow council members to heart. Um, we certainly grow to care and respect each other. We also recognize our duty to the town of Altadena and the importance of making sure every census tract is fairly and fully represented. With tonight's continued absence of council member Bryce, the executive committee will discuss the situation again at its May meeting and will deliberate any motion to consider action from Council should one be brought forth tonight or any time going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Arnzen. Recording Secretary Dorothy Wong. Or I'm sorry, Corresponding Secretary. Wait, no, we're not. We are going to go not have any more cookies tonight because too much sugar. We are going with, what am I doing? We are proof, the minutes. <laughs> Council Member Sutherland. Okay, thank you. Council members, um, you received the minutes from the um, March 19th, 2024 uh, um, meeting over the weekend. Um, so far, I have received no um, corrections or uh, changes. Are there any here that you've thought of since you received them? In that case, I move that we accept the minutes as presented. Second. Thank you. All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. Aye. Any abstaining? Two. We've got two abstentions. Anyone not approving? Okay, so two abstentions and the yep. rest approval. Thank you. Treasurer O'Malley. <clears throat> I got an easy one today. Uh, we started the month of March. Yeah, March, right? 
uh, with $1,629.94. I didn't get the bank in time, and uh, we didn't buy anything. So we ended the month with $1,629.94. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to remind everybody that the Altadena Town Council is a volunteer body. We don't get any money from the county. We depend on the kindness of our residents to fund the things that we do. So if you could find it in your heart to uh, feed the can here as it makes its way towards you, and if you, at the end, if you could please give it to Council Member Wilkins there, I would very much appreciate it. Thank you. Council Member Wong. Thank you, Chair Knapp. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so I just wanted to give uh, a little bit of community updates. Coming up in the month of April, Altadena Heritage, April 18th, is doing Ask an Arborist um, event at 7 o'clock. You can learn about trees. Who doesn't want to learn about trees? <laughs> Um, so that's great stuff. And then they will also be then hosting the Golden Poppy uh, Awards in May and a student art contest. So you can find out more at altadenaheritage.org. Uh, let's see, what else? Those are just some highlights. And the Bob Lucas Library, If we're, I don't know if we're going to be talking about that, but that has closed and there will be a groundbreaking on April 18th. Uh, that sound good, everybody? <laughs> um, I also did uh, create a very awesome generic uh, town council business card. So if anybody wants to update their business card or get theirs going, I have a very easy uh, business card template now uh, that we can use. And so anyone else that wants to give us information, uh, you can email me, the town council, dorothy.wong at altadenatowncouncil.org, the Altadena Library, altadenanews.org. And we are also adding resources to our resource page. Um, so just check it out. And if, you're, if there isn't something and you can't find it, let us know and we'll uh, keep adding it to our website, et cetera. Is that it? Sound good, everybody? Did you announce Vachella? No. Did I just give it to you? I did. Here. Hold on, it's right here. There. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so Vachella is going on live music and arts festival. That'll be Saturday, May 4th from 2 to 6 p.m. And it's free. Uh, so check that out at gopusd.com. Vachella, that's taking place, um, Elliott Arts Magnets. 2184 Lake Avenue, Altadena. And stay up to date, altadenatowncouncil.org. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Wong. I just wanted to add that the groundbreaking for Bob Lucas that's on Thursday the 18th will be at 10 a.m. at the Bob Lucas Library. So you're welcome to come out and um, kick off what will be likely a year-long um, construction project as that library gets updated. Um, before we move on to our public safety reports, and Captain Williams, if you wanted to make your way up, please go ahead and do so. I just wanted to take a minute to recognize that we have a new dad among us, and I wanted to congratulate uh, Council Member Carmody and his husband, Brad, on the birth of their son, Oliver. It's it's a first time baby for them. He came a little early. They were on their way for a little weekend getaway. When they got the call, the baby was on the way and they had to fly to another state. So at any rate, we're very excited for you and very happy for both of you. Okay, council, council member, council member Williams, sheriff, sheriff's captain Williams. I will have less, less wow. sugar next time. It's been a while since I got a promotion. I do, so, yeah. I do want you to know that I made cookies today, and I don't eat cookies, but I eat dough, and I think I ate too much dough because I'm clearly, like, a little out of my mind. You're forgiven. So, so. I do have cookies, so if you want one before you go. Thank you, thank you. She's looking at my belly. You know, so she... <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, good, good evening. How's everybody doing? 
just want to start with uh, some of the crime stats. Uh, we're still trending down in our aggravated assaults, uh, violent crimes. They're down 31% uh, compared to last year around this time. So that's a good thing that we're still trending down. And then our overall property crimes is down 18%. However, there is an issue still with residential burgs. Uh, I remember around this time last year, maybe year before, we were having a big issue with uh, vehicle break-ins. Now I'm seeing it's, it's moved over to residential burglaries and it's becoming more of a problem than, uh, than I thought. So around this time last year, we had 16 um, uh, residential burglaries. Now, this time we're at 34. So we're up 92%. Now, that number uh, really spiked last week. Just last week alone, we had uh, five in two days. So we had an, um, a crew that we believe is going around targeting certain homes. They uh, go up and act like a door dash. They'll ring the doorbell. Uh, nobody's there. They'll go to the back and, and smash and get in. Uh, we do have a um, uh, description of the car. It is a white vehicle, white Nissan. So I just want to put that out um, just for people to be aware of. I think it's really important that neighborhood watches, neighborhood neighbors stick together just to report suspicious activity. That's uh, a great way to try to mitigate some of these issues. We, we do try to do extra, patrol, extra patrols, and we're going to submit uh, for more uh, resources to, to help with that extra patrol, but uh, we're also going to need the, the uh, community's help with uh, trying to mitigate some of these, these burglary issues. And it appears just last week they were, the area that they were targeting was just east of Fair Oaks, uh, west of Altadena uh, Drive, in a specific area. It was, it's obvious that they targeted that, that specific area. Um, and all of these um, break-ins were forcible entries. Uh, I think I talked about last week, last month, how uh, we were getting a lot of um, reports of people leaving their doors open, windows open. Uh, not this time. They were all forcible entries. Uh, entries. So just uh, for the neighborhood, uh, for the community, just be aware of these residential burgs. They're becoming a big problem, not just in Altadena, but all along the Foothill area. Um, just had a staff meeting uh, today with the different stations in our division, and they all mentioned the same thing. Other than that, I have... Uh, Oh, we did make a good arrest today. Uh, we kind of uh, pinpoint one person that was causing a lot of issues in Altadena. Uh, we had planned to serve a search warrant and, and get this person, but uh, we kind of uh, ran into some good luck and were able to apprehend that person today. And that person is good for at least five or six uh, commercial burglaries and different uh, problems in the area. So uh, hopefully... Uh, that will help deal with some of the issues that we've been having, uh, uh, particularly on the um, west side of, uh, of Altadena. But we're happy that uh, our detectives did a good work, good job, and uh, apprehending that person just today before I got in. Uh, two events I want to talk about. The drug take back is going to be April 27th. It's going to be between 10 and 2. Of course, uh, that's a drive-through uh, event. People would just come up and drop off any prescription, uh, unwanted prescription uh, drugs that they have. We are working with the DAA, DEA. Uh, we collect the drugs and they take it for us. So that's something we're going to continue to do every six months. So just reminding April 27th, between 10 and 2, we'll be here to collect those prescription um, drugs. April 27th. And then the next thing, uh, May 4th, is our open house. It's been, like I said uh, last time, it's been a while since we had one. That's uh, April 4th between 10 and 2. Uh, we're just going to open up the, the station to everyone. Uh, we'll have guided tours if you want to see the station. Uh, and some of the outside uh, entities that we have with the department, uh, some of our SWAT. We may uh, try to work with the fire department, and uh, they'll be available also. And uh, just different people there to to provide information. Um, other than that, um, that's all I have for today. Food? 
yes, there, we are, we do plan to have food. Right now it's about, uh, limited to about hamburgers and hot dogs, but we, we may figure something else out. Hamburgers and hot dogs goes a long and, way. And it's free. It's free. And it's free. And it's free. And we don't have an, a, you know, an oversaturation of hamburgers or hot dogs in Altadena, so we will take it. Council Member Vega? Were the houses that were um, hit, were any of them deterred by cameras, like the ring cameras or anything, or that didn't matter? No, it didn't matter in this case. Uh, the ring cameras helped us get a good description of the vehicles, so we have, do, we have something to work on, so that kind of helped out, but it didn't deter them. Council Member Wong? Hi, Captain. Hi. So um, I requested the sign, one sign at least, to be uh, replaced, mm -hmm. uh, the neighborhood watch sign, and it still hasn't uh, made its way uh, to being posted. That's a couple of months now, I think. You requested it to be put up? Yeah. Through Public Works? You were going to check to see. I think you thought that you may have had a, a sign in the station or a couple of signs that we, have been we delivered. Do. We have, you we do. have one available. So we so, need to make the request of Public Works to Right. Hang. They will come and get it from us, and then they will put it, put it up. Unless you want to take the sign and have someone put it up themselves. But Public Works is available to do that, I believe. Okay, so public works will put up will be the request point for the signs. No, let's, so yeah. the best way to do this is I'm going to tell our community relations deputy if you can tell me exactly where it needs to be put up, he will make the contact through public works and put it up Perfect. for you. Yeah. Thank you. I think that'd be the best way of doing it. Are there any other questions? Go ahead. Regarding the um, the residential burglaries you were talking about before, yes. are they all during the day at night? Because I think you mentioned last time they were typically during the day. No yes, all of them during the day between 10 and 5 p.m. Wow. Of the ones we're talking about for last week, yes. yes. Uh, and the majority of them are during the day. I did just want to add to that that I follow Pasadena Police Department, and they, even though they're further south than us in the Foothills community, they are going through the same thing with residents being home and back door, sliding door, glass doors, quarter panels being um, broken during the middle of the day, and then the, the vandals are coming in the house while the residents are home. Oh, wow. So it is a big deal. Go ahead. Or, um. Yes, uh, even Gates in this in these incidents instance uh, didn't deter them from from going in. Uh, that's why I really believe that neighborhood watch, if they can, if we get word of a, of a uh, uh, burglary occurring, we'll get there fast. That's like on our priority. So, okay. uh, as a matter of fact, we were able to catch one. Uh, last week in action. So, uh, a resident called and we made it out there in time to catch them they, as they were moving away. So. Are there any other questions of council? No? Oh, hold on. Go ahead. So, Captain, just, so if I have like San Marino security, do you guys get those calls? I'm I mean, sorry, say that part. So again. if I have San Marino security or post or whatever. San Marino security? Yeah, and it's, an alarm goes off. You guys get those calls in the if, same way that a If they contact watch? us, yes. Okay, all right. If uh, alarms go off, audible alarms, usually the company calls us and we respond to them. But there were no alarms in these last, this last month? That's a good question, I have to find that out. I don't believe so from reading the reports, but um, I'm not 100% sure. Any other questions? I did want to express on behalf of this council our condolences on the passing of the Lomita Sheriff's deputy who was killed in the off-duty traffic accident. So I did want to say um, that our condolences are with you and thank his you. family. Much appreciated. Okay, thank you, and we will see you at your open house. Yes, hamburgers and all. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, California Highway Patrol, I saw Officer Bay here. Here he is. Good evening, everyone. Sorry. Council members, members of the public. If I look a little red, it's not because I'm embarrassed or nervous. I was just kind of out in the sun 
all day uh, today with sunscreen, of course. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm Officer Excellent. Brian Bay with the California Highway Patrol, and I'll be uh, presenting our March 2024 traffic crashes. Uh, so the California Highway Patrol out of the Altadena area office investigated a total of 26 tra uh, traffic crashes in the month of March. Out of those 26, three were hit and run. One was investigated for driving under the influence. Uh, seven were uh, investigated for injuries, possible injuries. Injuries ranging from possible injury to uh, moderate injury, as well as uh, 15 property damage crashes only. So. Your, your fender bender, no one's injured, no one gets transported to the, to the hospital. Uh, with that being said, uh, I believe on March 26th, uh, we investigated a vehicle versus bicyclist traffic crash at the intersection of, um, I wanna say New York and Altadena Drive. Um, I don't have any specifics other than the fact that the bicyclist was transported, however, they only received minor injuries according to the report. I do want to remind everybody that April is our Distracted Drivers Awareness Month, so please uh, be aware of your surroundings. Um, please put the phone down, it can wait. Uh, just focus on driving. If, you see, if you're a passenger and you see a driver that might be distracted, whether that's not even just texting, but also fidgeting with the, uh, the radio or a dashboard or, or maybe doing some grooming on the way, to, to work or, or your destination, just please understand that we're trying to raise awareness for that. Um, I do also want to add that uh, next month, May 15th, uh, the Altadena CHP is going to be uh, kind of hosting an e-bike safety presentation at the Arcadia Library. Tentatively, it's at uh, 6.30 p.m. Um, all are, are welcome there. It's a, it's a free uh, presentation where we kind of go we just got a, um, some literature from the Office of uh, Traffic Safety so that we can kind of disseminate out a lot of these um, rules and regulations as this new technology of, of e-bikes is kind of, kind of becoming prevalent in our communities. So um, please look for something in our social media soon. I, I want to say it's either going to be the 15th of May or the 30th of May. We just need to um, just confirm that with the library. Um, I also want to say that May is a possible bike to school month, right, Council Member Wong? Mm -hmm. So maybe on the 8th or the 15th, we still need to iron out the details, but um, we would like to participate in that any way that we can. Um, as well as we're trying to get a radar trailer uh, deployed on Altadena Drive by Olive. Um, I've been in contact with Public Works, but they've been inundated with a lot of other projects due to our inclement weather that we've been uh, receiving. So our radar trailers, uh, as technology, you know, as advanced as they are, they sometimes are susceptible to rain. So um, that proves a little bit of an issue. That concludes my report. Hopefully I didn't ramble through that too quickly. Are there any questions at all? Yes. Council Member Wilkins. The uh, accident at uh, New York and Altadena, my son rides that like twice a week. Okay. Bike versus car. So it's probably morning, I guess. Was it morning probably or? I just had the base basic details right now. I, I don't know if it's morning or, or evening, but something to consider and not to, to interrupt you, but the sun, you know, rises yeah, right in the now, east and yeah. sets in the west. So visibility is definitely really bad. Is, is, yeah, is, is bad for both dog walkers. If you're a pedestrian <laughs> walking a uh, dog or pushing a stroller, just please be cognizant that you may see traffic, but they may you not see you. It. Yeah. So do you know, was there speeding or anything? Like, I guess you don't, you just know there was an accident. I know that there is definitely speed on Altadena Drive. However, as it comes to New York Drive, you know, there, there yeah. is a traffic signal there, but we are still seeing speeding on Altadena Drive by Midwick and, and further. Yeah, further people just come uh, right behind me. This. All right, thanks for that. Of course. Any other questions? Okay, thank you so much. It's good to see you. Thank, thank you, you for making that. it here. Of course, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, LA County Fire, Maria Greiken. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get the projector ready. I'm gonna get the projector ready for the next one. Yeah. Okay, for the month of March, a uh, total of 396 responses. Uh, 251 of those were for medical calls with 208 patients transported. Uh, we had 
five fires. Uh, two of them were trash fires. One of them was um, a generator fire, um, and it was confined to the generator, and that was on March 14th, which was the day that was just crazy in Altadena. Uh, and then the other fire was a chimney fire on Palm Street on the 24th, and that was confined to the chimney. Um, the other fire also on March 14th, and probably caused by the wind, uh, was the uh, on Buena Loma Court uh, behind a church or mausoleum that's there, um, a single story, double wide, um, caught on fire. So that one caused about uh, $100,000 worth of damage total. And then on March 14th, again, on Beverly Way, the three trees that came down and crashed into the house, causing significant damage. It did $200,000 worth of damage to that home. Um, <laughs> During the month, 38 instances of power lines down, arcing wires, wires down, any of those types of hazardous conditions. Um, the majority of those happened on that March 14th date. Um, that is it for the report. There were 12 traffic collisions, and including that one that uh, Officer Bay spoke about versus the bicyclist uh, at New York and Altadena Drive. Um, our our uh, annual brush inspections will begin on May 1st. So for those who are listed as being in the fire zone, those annual brush inspections will begin on May 1st. Um, and once again, this year, we, uh, we are not enforcing Assembly Bill 3074, which is otherwise known as Zone Zero, uh, which is that five foot ember resistant zone. Uh, we are not enforcing that. So the Board of Forestry still has not determined what the parameters of that five foot zone are going to be. So nobody has to worry about that. Um, my guess is for at least another two years. Um, we did have a, uh, just want a little public service announcement to keep an eye out for, especially for those who do a lot of hiking. Uh, rattlesnakes are making an appearance. So they're out now. Um, we did have a rattlesnake bite today, but that was out in Calabasas. Uh, and today, just west of JPL, uh, there was a bear sighting. So I had to get the sheriffs out there for that. From the Crescent Valley the sheriffs went out for that. So just, you know, keep an eye out for Mother Nature. <laughs> and are there any questions? Uh, just a couple of things. I, in March, had a mountain lion on my property, fairly south of Loma Alta Drive, so Me that too. was big. Um, that's the first time in the 13 years we've lived here that we've had a mountain lion. And secondly, someone in the President Streets reported today, I believe it was President Streets, could have been Cheney Trail, was Cheney Trail, sorry. Uh, I just was thinking of my mail that came through. <laughs> Um, that they were bringing in their trash cans and there was a baby rattlesnake underneath one of their bins. Ah. So just be aware as you're bringing in your cans that it is rattlesnake season. It also is baby rattlesnake season. They're very little, um, but usually mom is around or nearby. So please be careful when you're bringing things in. And, and those it, babies are more dangerous um, because the adult rattlesnakes, sometimes when they bite, they do not release the venom because they can control it. Uh, but the babies cannot. So if the baby rattlesnake bites, it will release venom. So, Any other questions for Maria while she is here? Maria, I thought I saw someone else from County Fire here. Was there someone? And he left yeah. because he wasn't sure? I wasn't sure if I was going to make it here in time, so he was, uh, he was here just in case I didn't make it. Will you thank him for coming? I, I appreciate it so much. Okay, well, thank quick. you. Oh, go ahead. Wasn't Come there a quick fire up on Eaton Canyon? Did you report that last time? Oh, you know, I didn't. There was. Um, it was very, very small. It was. Ca it does not appear on the Altadena report because it, it was in Eaton Canyon. So it goes on Pasadena. Uh, Pasadena. Yeah, yeah, it gets reported on Pasadena stats. Okay, thank you for that. Anything else? All right, thanks so much, Maria. I appreciate you. No problem. Okay, we are moving on to our community reports, and it'll be good to have Parks and Rec here. There is Guillermo making his way. All 
Hi guys, uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, Loma, uh, Altadena Parks and Rec uh, that we have for all the parks in the county. We have um, Low Malt Park, Charles S. Farnsworth Park, Triangle Park, which is right around the corner, and Charles White Park. Um, we can go to the next slide. Um, so just to kind of give you guys a recap of what happened uh, in the last month, uh, for the month of March at Farnsworth Park, we had a Women's History Month. Our park supervisor, Alejandro, went around and actually kind of um, every Saturday uh, at 9 a.m. to just educate the, the patrons, just kind of some historical figures, including um, one of our uh, judicial uh, Supreme Court judges who actually had passed away, Sota Mayor, and also like with uh, St. Mother Teresa. Um, so he provided some refreshments for everyone while they were there. Um, in addition, we had Cesar Chavez. Um, he had a variety of uh, food, so he had uh, El Patron, so they had carnita, salsa, tortilla chips, and then he had live performance. And in addition, he provided a pamphlet just to kind of uh, show some of the historical significance <laughs> that Cesar Chavez played a role uh, for, for labor rights. Um, and then also with our Spring Jubilee, we actually just had that one recently on March 28th. Uh, at Farnsworth Park, that over like 500 people, so everyone came out to that one. We were giving out hot dogs, we had a concert, and then the famous egg hunt, which everyone was going wild for that one. Um, and then at Low Malts Park, we also had our March Madness. Obviously, everyone's a huge fan of basketball, um, so we had all our teens actually in all of LA County come out uh, to our park at Loma Alta, and each one hosted their own team, and they competed. Unfortunately, our team lost around the second round. <laughs> But uh, everyone had a good, uh, fun time. They had games. We were recording. The, uh, they were actually recording the, the game live uh, on the screen, so everyone was able to see it even outside of the park. Um, in addition, we also had um, a video game area. They were serving burgers. We had inflatable jumpers for everybody. Um, so that was a fun day for everybody. And then also we had our Spring Jubilee at the Farmer's Market. In addition, we also had our egg hunt, arts and crafts. Um, and then we also had some music uh, for that day. And then for Spring Pad, that one actually just happened also the past weekend. Uh, super fun. Unfortunately, it rained out on our Thursday. Uh, we had about 400 people come out even on that Thursday. So we had a movie night for trolls. We did snacks with the kids. They also did a healthy, uh, they did their own cooking class. So they actually did ice cream. So it was fun for them to make their own ice cream using rock salt and ice. Um, but yeah, it was a good turnout, April 6th. Luckily, we had a nice sunny day. Again, fun turnout. We actually had our biking activities at SoCal Cross. Um, and then we also had our concert, we had uh, tacos, we also had um, horchata, uh, jamaica, we had tamales, empanadas, so we went all out for that event. Um, so look forward to Summer Pad also coming up. And then, so some upcoming events that we got going on for the month of May and June is uh, for both parks, that they all have actually the same events, just different days. Uh, so we have our Parks at Sunset, that's gonna be a little bit more relaxing, except at Farnsworth, they're gonna throw a, a huge shindig uh, with Cinco de Mayo and Latino Festival. They're gonna have music, they're gonna have food, they're gonna have arts and crafts for the kids. Um, and then Asian American Pacific Islander Month, we're actually gonna be celebrating it using um, a specific like type of food tasting, um, again, a specific craft, and then also with some activities. Uh, in addition, we are gonna be celebrating Pride Month. Um, those are the dates that we're gonna be having for each park. And same thing, arts and crafts, they're gonna have a specific food tasting, and then also some specific activities. Um, and then also for our teens, uh, they're gonna be having a fun uh, few weeks coming up in April. So recently they just did their girls sports day at Roosevelt Park. Um, and then what they're gonna be doing is a Cinderella's Closet event. They're actually anticipating just because the girls are obviously gonna be going to prom soon, they're gonna be able to pick out a dress and then that same dress they're going to be able to use the following week during their girls' empowerment dinner. So all the teen girls are going to be able to, uh, to go to Loma Alta, and they're going to actually be able to get their hair and makeup done, and it's going to be paid for by, uh, by our department. So the girls get to do it free of charge. And then following that, they're going to go to a nice fancy dinner at Virginia Robinson's Garden. So um, I left the flyer out there. If anybody's interested, just scan the QR code and then register. Um, and then sports for Loma Alta Park right now, we got going on. Uh, we just finished our basketball banquet, so they finished up the season. Um, and then a new program we got going on is actually uh, with Galactic Sports. Some of you, I don't know if you were able to remember, but the Gasol Foundation actually hosted clinics um, at our gym. This time they were actually changing up the sport and they're gonna be doing track and field. So it starts April 3rd all the way to June 5th. So I put out a flyer out there if anybody's interested uh, to register, please more than welcome to. And then for our upcoming season, we actually have Lomont Park Youth Baseball. Um, it should have started already actually about a week or two ago. Unfortunately, the rain has been getting us pretty bad. So we've just been a bit of on a pause. Um, we're anticipated to start on April 27th. So um, if the rain you know, doesn't get us again, we might have to push back. Um, but yeah, 
And then for our recreation classes, right now, uh, our main classes that we got going on are tennis. Uh, they have private lessons. They have uh, their Mighty Munchkins program. So they have anywhere for youth all the way to adults, if anybody's interested. And then our Palapitanian Panthers jump rope. Um, they're all the way from May 1st, uh, March 1st, all the way to May 24th. And then in addition, we also have two dance classes. We have the Urban Ballroom Conservatory, which, sees, uh, which teaches ballroom dancing in an urban style with Miss Tamarsha. And then we have the Soul Sisters with Miss Vicky teaching line dancing. And then at Farnsworth Park, we got going on, we have our jazzy ballet, our pre-ballet, and then a new class that Miss Adrian Br uh, Bratton uh, got was actually the salsa cardio. And then we also have our Alta Jam with Joe Cabet. And then we're continuing our partnership with Altadena Library. Definitely love them coming out to all of our events and then hosting the reading time. Um, so I have a flyer back there if anybody's interested. Those are the dates. And then just to conclude, if anybody is interested, uh, if you ever need to contact either the park supervisor directly um, at those specific parks, more than welcome to put out their emails and then the phone numbers for those parks. And then my information is up there as well. And then if you are interested in kind of getting our email blast that we send out every month, uh, please feel free to scan that QR code and you'll be able to register and then I'll be able to send you those emails. All right. Any questions? Yeah. And you can scan that from, from pretty far away and it'll take you to the dock. Um, okay, my two, or I have three questions. One, will water polo be coming back to um, Loma Alta Park this summer? So I'm waiting on actually our aquatics division. I know that Loma Alta pool is actually there, but they're a separate division. But I can follow up and ask them, see what their program is going to look like. Okay, that would be great. Do you, I had emailed Sam a couple of times, and he was going to check with planning as it relates to the final plans for the... Uh, development at Charles White Park. Do you have any information on where the plans are in the process? They haven't disseminated that to us. Um, they should already have some if they were to con uh, conduct in the construction already. But let me ask them about that because they haven't given me that. Okay, we'll want you to come back and present the plans as soon as they're finalized. And I think that they were fairly close to being. I think something could have been the pickleball court. Something held something up. Um, and then... I was just going, I noticed that um, our library director is here. Did you get a response on Loma Alta Park serving as storage for the library? You did get a response. Okay, great. All right, so that's one last thing on your list. Any questions for Parks before he adjourns? There's a lot of great programming coming up. Thank it's you. so lovely to see that there's like four and 500 people showing up to our events. Oh, yeah, especially even during the rain. I was really surprised. We had a lot of people come out during the event. You know what? I think we learned a lot from last year's rain that, like, a little rain isn't going to stop, especially kids. Oh, yeah, they don't they care, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. It's so good to see you. Uh, Count Judy Matthews is not here, but I did want to turn this over to Councilmember Arnzen, who had sure. something to uh, read for her. Judy wanted me to convey, um, please share that Renewal Strategies Adapting to Change Lunch and Learn webinar with Dr. Ramzan Amiri is on Thursday, April 18th, 12 to 1 p.m. Chamber members interested in an opportunity for free booth at the Neighborhood Farmers Market on Fridays from 4 to 8 p.m. Refer the community to the Chamber's website so I am officially referring you to the Chamber's website for more information about upcoming events. That's altadinachamber.org. Altadinachamber.org. There's something for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're going to have a um, report from the Eaton Canyon Nature Center. Is Kenya here? There she is. Welcome. It's so nice to have you here. We're so excited to hear from, the, from Eaton Canyon. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Kenya Estrella and I am the Recreation Services Supervisor for the Eaton Canyon Natural Area and Nature Center. 
Um, and um, I just want to share some stuff with you guys. Um, if you haven't visited the park or if you haven't been there in a while, I uh, just want to update you guys on our hours. Um, we currently open the gate at 8 a.m. and we close it at 7.30. Um, and then our nature center opens at 10.30 and closes at 7, except on Saturdays because we have a lot of morning programs. So on Saturday mornings, our nature center opens at 9 a.m. Still closes at 7, though. Um, and then I just want to remind you, when you do visit Eden Canyon, uh, we're not a regular lawn, lawn and tree park. Uh, we are a natural area and wildlife preserve. Uh, so we ask that everyone keep it as it is, so pretty much leave no trace. Um, all plants and animals are protected. Um, and then just a couple uh, park rules and reminders. Uh, we always ask that everyone have their dog on a leash. Uh, no bicycles on our side of the trails. Uh, you can ride your bike outside of our park boundary. Um, no alcohol beverages in the park in case people have picnics. Um, it's no smoking al allowed. And uh, lock your vehicles because uh, unfortunately we do get a lot of break-ins in the park. Uh, so lock your vehicles and don't leave any valuables in there. And of course, no barbecues or open fires in the park. Um, next slide. Um, so we have uh, every Saturday morning, we have weekend activities. Um, and uh, we have the family nature walk, starts at 9 a.m. Um, and then we have in our patio, we have our superintendent chat at 10 a.m. and noon. And then we have story time uh, starting at 10.30 and our discovery tables from 10.30 to 12.30. These are all free and open to everyone. Uh, no registration required, it's just free and open. Just come on down. And then we have some monthly activities. Uh, we partner with Pasadena Audubon. Uh, we have our monthly bird walks. You do have to register for that one. You do have to go onto the Pasadena Audubon website and get your spot. Um, and then we do uh, plant walks with the CMPS uh, San Gabriel chapter on the third Sunday from 10 a.m. to 11. No registration required. Um, and then we have a conservation group that meets every second Sunday of the month. This past Sunday, they just met. Uh, so they take care of um, trail maintenance in removing invasive plant species and caring for the trails there. Um, for this month of April, um, this weekend, we have our Earth Day event from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's free and open to everyone in the community. Uh, we'll be giving out prizes for people who play our um, Agents of Discovery uh, missions. You can, it's a free um, app that you can use, not just at our park, but also various parks. Um, we'll have crafts, games. Uh, CMPS will be there doing a mini plant sale and a potting activity. And um, we'll just have lots of fun that day. So come join us this Saturday. Um, and then uh, the following weekend, we have the City Nature Challenge. Uh, we will be out there Saturday, uh, Friday and Saturday encouraging people to participate. But the challenge does go all the way until Monday. Um, for more information, I would recommend for you to visit the City Nature Challenge website. Um, we can skip that slide. That event got canceled, sorry. <laughs> um, and then just in June, uh, we have two big things going on. We have our uh, Bark Ranger Month, which you can bring your dog over um, every Saturday of the month in June from 10 to 2. And you can take the pledge to uh, be responsible out on the trails with your furry friend. And uh, we'll be giving out uh, bandanas, um, bag dispensers, water bowls. So just lots of fun. Um, uh, we're hoping to have a uh, Starbucks come out and give out pup cups. So that's still in the works, but hopefully. Uh, so come see us in June. And then our biggest event of the year is in June. It's called A Day in Nature, where art and nature unite. It's on Saturday, June 22nd, 9 to 2. And we have lots of um, organizations coming out. We have um, uh, CMPS, uh, the Friends of the California Condors. We have Caltech coming out. Um, we have um, Audubon Society, LA Birders, just a whole bunch of organizations coming out. So it's free and open. Just, uh, you know, we'll have lots of activities, animal presentations. Um, so yeah, come join us on that day. And um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> just yet. Do we have any questions? We, what schedule did we uh, determine they'll be coming back? Quarterly? Okay, so then they'll be back again in July? Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct, okay. Mm -hmm. And Kenya, will you be coming generally? 
or you'll let us know in advance. Yes, it's going to be me. Mostly. It'll be you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's lovely to have you. We've really uh, been missing having you guys here, so we're glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here, and hopefully I can share as much as possible with you guys, and yeah. Yeah, there's some great events coming up. Go ahead, Councilmember Marcuson. Yes, if I could, as a member of the board of Eaton Canyon Nature Center Associates, I would recommend that everybody join the Nature Center. The, it's, it, the dues are not very high. They have a wonderful gift shop in there. You should go in and see they have a really good museum that we've really been working at restoring, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a, a, this is a lot of the programs, but the actual Nature Center itself has a whole bunch of really wonderful educational things that you can go in and look at um, and, and stuffed animals and things like that. But not, not, not what do they call this? The fu- not the fuzzies, but the real, like, real taxidermy, yes. So anyway, I just really, yeah, yeah, not, not the stuffies. Yeah, no, the real dead, yeah. But here's the deal. They're, you know, nobody went out and killed them. The, the, the they are educational. They are really helpful for um, conservation, having everybody understand. They have live snakes. They have turtles. They have live turtles. They have. So I just really would encourage everybody to actually go to the nature center, not just hike. So, and they have bathrooms in there. Yes. Okay. Please come say hello. <laughs> yeah, all right. Thank you. Okay, now we are going to move into our special presentation. So we have um, LA County Public Works, who's gonna do a presentation on the advertising bus shelter replacement phase one. Is it Nora Din? Nora Dean, thank you so much. We appreciate your being here. And I saw Lee Miller here as well. And I saw some other folks from Public Works. Good to see you. Okay. Did you, you provided a presentation, yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I will move out of the way. Say it again. Oh, Danny, she needs you, your help. Um, Oh, she got it. While that's getting set up, I'd like to uh, note there is an addition to the agenda, Council. Um, 6.4, where we took out legislative, will be replaced with chair uh, of the special election committee, Council Member O'Malley. So we'll be expecting that at 6.4. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Nura Dean. I'm a project manager with uh, LA County Department of Public Works. Um, I'm here with my colleague, William Yan uh, from Transit Operations. Um, and today we're going to be presenting the Advertising Bus Shelter Replacement Project, Phase 1. Um, so this project aims to address the aging infrastructure of 40 bus stops throughout all five supervisorial districts in Los Angeles County. Um, the improvements are going to be new bus shelters, Um, There'll be solar and hardwired powered lighting, uh, benches, trash receptacles, and bike racks. Um, This is the project schedule. It's set to begin advertisement at the beginning of July with the start of construction at the beginning of December and the end of construction at the end of March. So the duration is going to be approximately 60 working days or 12 weeks. This is a map of all of the bus stop locations. I'm sorry, it's a little hard to see. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's spread out through all five supervisorial districts. Um, we're going to focus on the Altadena locations today, and I will be showing them on the future slides. Um, so this is all of the uh, Altadena bus stop locations. Um, we'll go through them individually, so I won't just you know, read a list to you right now. <laughs> uh, so we can go to the next slide. So this is um, the Altadena locations. As you can see, they're primarily along 
um, two streets. I believe it's Lake Avenue and Fair Oaks. Um, and we'll go through, I have pictures of the existing locations on the upcoming slides. Yep. Um, so this is the first location, Fair Oaks Avenue and Figueroa Drive at the northwest corner of the intersection. As you can see, that's the existing bus shelter that is going to be replaced. There'll be a new bench, there'll be a trash can and a bike rack. And so the trash can, bench, and bike rack will be at all, all bus stops. This is the second location, Fair Oaks Avenue and Figueroa Drive at the southeast corner. Fair Oaks and Mendocino at the southwest corner. Fair Oaks and Ventura at the northwest corner. Fair Oaks and Woodbury right in front of the Arco at the southwest corner. And this is Lake Ave in Boston. As you can see, it's right in front of Elliott Middle School. It's at the northeast corner. This is Lake Avenue and Calaveras. It's also in front of the school at the southeast corner. This, sorry, same, same intersection, the northwest corner in front of the Pizza Hut. And Lake Avenue and Fontenet Way at the southwest corner. And that is the last location. Um, here you can see the bus shelter renderings. Um, it's pretty, pretty similar to the existing bus shelters. Um, it's just kind of a newer design. Um, the benches are gonna have armrests um, to discourage people from sleeping or, or setting up there. Um, what's not pictured here are the bike racks or trash cans. Um, also, there will be canopy lights. Um, I don't think it's shown here, but they will be lighted. And the advertisements will be backlit as well. And there will be an area for ADA. Um, so some construction activities, um, there'll be signs to alert the community 72 hours in advance of any closures. Um, the duration of each shelter we anticipate to be maximum a week. Um, and during that time, there will be temporary lane closures, one lane for a certain amount of distance in front of each bus shelter. Um, and that will be during the work hours of 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Um, and they will be removing the traffic control at the end of the workday. Um, and the last thing is just going to be the noise associated with any construction activity. Hopefully it'll be minimal since it's not a huge project. Um, that's it, thank you so much. Uh, me and Will are here to answer any questions you might have. Uh, my, question, my first question is who is responsible for emptying the trash receptacles at the bus stops? So um, we currently, it's maintained by Clear Channel Outdoor, who's also responsible for placing the advertisements. So they sub out their maintenance of bus shelters, including trash pickup, sweeping around the bus shelters. And they're called SureTech. But um, if you guys ever have any issues, such as overflowing trash, or um, they haven't picked up the trash yet, or the, or the bus shelters just dirty in general, I can leave you a direct number that you guys can call, and then we can call the vendor directly to you know, sanitize it or clean it up or whatever it is that you need. How often should they be? Um, currently, they're scheduled to be out there twice a week. Um, in terms of what days they're actually out there, it's, I'm not 100% sure because I know they're always switching back and forth. So, but they are supposed to be out there twice a week, and I know they only empty the trash if it's greater than 25% full. So other than that, they'll clean up around the bus shelter. Do you have the number now that you want to leave with us? Or yes. You, okay, go so ahead. So any bus stop related issues, you can call Armin. And his last name is D-A-L-Y-A-N. And you call him directly at 626-458-3907. And that's with any bus stop, not just the advertising shelters, that you can see bus benches, anything in general. Okay, that's great. Any other questions about this project? Council Member Arnzen? Um, it might not directly relate to the project, but there was an unhoused member of our community that passed at a bus stop that you're replacing. Um, part of the community has been asking about potentially, I'm sorry, this is actually in your census tract, um, but I, I know there was talk at the time, could we put a plaque or can we do something to honor that member? Is there any potential to push that forward? And if so, who would I contact or who would Jafina contact? Um, I, I guess you could run that through Lee and then he could run it through our proper channels. Um, I can't, I'm, I'm not sure to be honest with you right now. 
Council Member Markerson? Well, I just had a quick question as an easier kind of response thing. Could they put in a complaint about through the works to get to the bus people? Like if, if we put in a, a notice through the works app? Yes. Yes. yes you can okay, so that's yeah. easy too. Okay, right. so for trash emptying at the bus shelters when they're more than 25% full or overflowing, you can also put the request in through the works app, which is really helpful. Correct. Okay, but, great. But if you want a direct response, then yes, you can call directly go him. that number because when you go through the website, it'll channel through us and sometimes, sometimes it'll take a day or two before we actually get to it. So if you want to, you know, handle ASAP like the day of, then typically we can handle that within the same day. Okay. And then who, how is someone making a request to advertise? So if somebody is interested in advertising at one of the bus shelters, what do they do? So we have a third party vendor, um, Clear Channel Outdoor Advertising, and we actually let them run their advertisement and in return, they pay for certain stuff like emptying the trash, maintaining the, the trash receptacle, and they do give us a portion of the revenue. But in terms of who they advertise to, we do have rules in place. Obviously, they can't, they can't advertise certain things such as alcohol, tobacco, things of that nature. But they do have their own set of rules that they, you know, how much they charge, who they choose to advertise to for the duration, that's, that's on them. We don't really have a say in that. Okay, so if someone from Altadena is interesting, interested, a business, a small business, for instance, or a realtor, um, they should reach out to Clear Channel Outdoor to look into advertising opportunities. Correct. Okay, yes. and is it, a, is it the same kind of um, mechanism as exists now, that it's just like a, a printed placard on the back? It's yes, not like it, digital? It, it's, it's like a poster, like a movie poster, like you know, you see that's currently out there right now. It's going to be identical size to what's out there right now, but obviously in a newer structure, it's going to be more beautiful and more appealing for advertisers. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Councilmember Wong? Hi, thank you for the information. Um, so these are currently replacing existing advertising shelters, right? Not new. Yes, correct. It, in okay. Altadena, it's all uh, replacements. Yeah. And so our... Essentially, Fair Oaks, for example, a lot of our main streets already have kind of limited public right-of-way. And so on Fair Oaks, for example, ADA access can be quite difficult. So um, are they going to be, is that, ta how is that taken into consideration? So, so these shelters, these new ones that are going to be installed, they're actually going to be narrower. Okay. So there is going to be proper ADA clearance for wheelchairs to maneuver around. So there's actually going to be more room there than there is right now. We, we took that into consideration when we did the initial design Great. of these new shelters. Wonderful. And then there were residents just sharing the excitement about the bus stop that was the shelter that was installed at Lincoln and um, Altadena Drive, just Correct. south. Uh, and but people said, oh, could there be um, charging or different types of things or wayfinding perhaps in the future um, or again, just finding a way to give the bus shelters a sense of place, I guess. I know for the, mm -hmm. the charging, other communities have, have asked for that as well. So it's something we can look into for future phases. Um, I'm not, I don't believe we'll, we'll, this phase will have it, um, but for future phases we can look into okay. it. Okay, thank you so much. Any other questions? Do you, I know you said this was phase one. Is there an expected phase two? I believe there's four phases, um, right? Four, yeah. Um, I don't think, do we have the locations? For so, so right now, there, like Nuruddin had said, there is gonna be future phases, but right now we're actually trying to go through a, a separate channel of procuring these future shelters. So I know in Altadena alone, there's an additional 14 locations that's gonna have a new shelter in addition to the nine that Maria didn't have just showed you. But in terms of a, a timeline, I can't really give you a definitive timeline at this time, but we are working on something that's going to be a little bit more streamlined so we could actually just purchase it and install it rather than actually having to go through construction and things of that nature. Okay, so when that's decided, you will let us know so we can have you back? Uh, yes, I will inform Lee, Lee, and Lee will let you guys know. Great. All right, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Okay, we are moving on to our committee reports. Did we want to make a motion now? For what? 
to the to add to the agenda since the agenda was moved and approved? Sure. Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind, I'd like to move to add a 6.4 special election report to the agenda under the uh, committee reports. Second. Second. Oh, what? So we have a motion to add 6.4 special election a report from Council Member O'Malley. We have a second. All in favor? Anybody opposed or abstaining? Okay, great. So we will what? be adding a 6.4 6 under committee reports. Okay. All right. Land use, Chair Markison. Yes. Um, the land use committee did not meet in April. However, there was a meeting on April 11th with um, Public Works regarding the uh, Washington Boulevard Altina Drive project. And I just wanted to make a couple of clarifications that project should be starting the beginning of May down by the um, elementary school, Webster Elementary, um, is where they're going to be starting because they're going to be trying to work on that while most of it while school is not in session. Um, I, it was not mentioned in the meeting, but I will share that they have plans to put quite a number of trees along Washington Boulevard. Um, and also, I wanted to be clear, we talked earlier today about the intersection at um, New York and Althea Drive. That intersection is not part of the Washington Boulevard Altadena Drive resurfacing or re restoration of the um, asphalt because it's cement. So we do have a project into public works. They are, have been looking for quite a while at that intersection to do some safety improvements. Um, that is ongoing, but will not be part of the Washington Boulevard Altadena Drive project, it's going to go concurrently. So we don't have to wait until they get to, theoretically, we don't have to wait until they get to that area of the project, which is much later in next year, kind of, or at the end of this year. Um, they're working on it now. So we don't know what, we don't have a plan yet from them. We don't know what their, you know, what the plan is, but they are working on it. I just want to make sure everybody knew that it wasn't going to be held up by that Washington Boulevard Altadena Drive project because that intersection is cement and they're not touching the cement. So that's all I have. Okay. And so just to be clear, everyone should be aware that the project is going to start approximately a month early. So instead of June 1st, it is intended to start on May 6th. So if you regularly commute Washington Boulevard, um, in particular, please be aware that there will be construction and this project is intended to go about a year. Yes. Yes. And if, if people have seen cones on Washington Boulevard and holes and things, they've been, the, the um, contractor has been looking for water lines and, you know, electrical lines, all the things that are in the road so that they, so that they um, don't hit anything. That's... That's what they've been working on. So if you've seen at work going on, that's not the beginning of the project yet. But yes, May 6th um, is when they will start. Um, if, you, if anybody has any concerns or questions or problems as that goes forward, Sylvia Vega, me, Doug, and Reggie are the census tracts that are affected by this. And any of us, you know, get a hold of us and we'll be able to get a solution for you. Okay. Okay, any questions about the upcoming project? Okay, thank you. Safe Streets Committee, Chair Wong. Thank you, Chair Knapp. Uh, so the Altadena Town Council Safe Streets Traffic Safety and Mobility Committee meets the fourth Thursday of every month via Zoom. Join the next conversation Thursday, April 25th at 7 p.m. Uh, the, uh, you can sign up via the town council website um, and you should be able to find um, the invite, Altadena Safe Streets meeting. Uh, kicking off today uh, was the LA County Public Works slash LA County Bicycle Master Plan update for unincorporated areas of Los Angeles County. This is phase three of the project. In May, date TBD, we will have a town hall conversation with whoever would like to uh, basically look at 
all of the feedback that has come in so far, um, specifically for Altadena, and to be able to make comments on what residents and people who live, work, and play uh, mm -hmm. around Altadena have given feedback. Uh, so this is then just sort of assessing the feedback. The next phase will be the EIR uh, phase, and then the final phase after that will be the final uh, plan. So we're in phase three, and it's an exciting time uh, for us to really think about our 8.4 square miles of Altadena to see how we can find safe streets uh, for bicycling. And um, so please get involved with that. Um, and there will be some bonus bike rides going on. May is bike month. Uh, so uh, Altadena Heritage will be having their Golden Poppy Awards May 18th. And then May 26th will be the Golden Poppy Bike Ride. Um, and also the schools have been um, organizing to do Bike to School Day. So we have some schools uh, that have been uh, signed up. I think Altadena Elementary um, is excited to get involved as well as uh, Oak Knoll, um, maybe Odyssey. Uh, so if there are any schools interested in getting out there, also uh, bicycle safety, um, workshops with uh, Highway Patrol um, are, are optional. So I think uh, also uh, Jackson, there's some interest there. So get involved, get more people out there, and uh, I think that's it for now. Oh, one last thing, uh, it will be May. It's called uh, UC Berkeley Safe Trek, uh, is a program that's uh, funded by the Office of Traffic Safety and they're gonna offer workshops for traffic injury mapping, TIMS, which will be looking at your street and seeing um, how you can also learn about the crash data, which might help, you know, help us uh, better understand our traffic safety solutions. So thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Wong. I just wanted to remind the community that if you want to make public comment, we're coming up on that section in just a couple uh, minutes. And so we've got five public comments, so that'll be coming up next after these last two committee reports. Communication Committee, Chair Arnzen. Uh, the Communication Committee has created a community engagement project to introduce local youth to civic duty and opportunity. Every Friday, we host a dozen high school students at the community center for the day. Um, these students take tours, they, they hear from different speakers, um, and they look at community facilities, and those speakers talk about their work and community building efforts. They share their opinion on council-related projects and structures. The students brainstorm more ways to connect with the community. Um, we've been really fortunate to have our or planned participation from multiple agencies and leaders like Captain Jabari Williams, Altadena Mountain Rescue, Chair Knapp, Maria Horner of Tom Sawyer Camps, Fire Station 11 and the crew there, Altadena Main Library, there's more to come. Um, additionally, resident and committee member Isis Molden has volunteered hours of her time to engage with the youth. I also wanted to thank uh, the generosity of a number of local restaurants who've made sure that these students have a great lunch every Friday. Maggie Cortez of El Patron, Prime Pizza, Altadena Pizza Company, Tacos Casa, and also there's a bunch of local residents who've been donating to make sure these, these uh, places actually we can return to and actually give them some business, so thank you to them. I will point out Daniel Harlow, probably didn't want me to mention this, but he sits on the Land Use Committee. He's arranged an entire lunch for the students through his company, thank you Daniel. And lastly, the Altadena Country Club, is planning to provide an upcoming lunch. This is a great program. It gives students an incredible look at what it takes to run a community, and I'm really grateful for the community to show up and help support it. So thank you, Council, and thank you, community. That's it. Thank you. Okay, and I will turn it over to Council Member O'Malley for the special election. <coughs> thank you, Chair. This is ad lib, so. Pardon me if it doesn't make a lot of sense. We didn't, we didn't think ahead. Um, with the resignation of Council Member Peck, whom I would like to personally thank for his service, he was, he was great to have, um, we have a special election for Census Tract 4611. That's the south central section of Altadena, bordered on the west by Fair Oaks Avenue. 
by the Pasadena city limits on the south and diagonally along Woodbury from Santa Rosa to Lake Avenue by Lake Avenue on the east and Mariposa Street on the north. If you live there, you can run for the seat. Uh, a special election is a little bit different than a normal election. You do not have to go uh, bother your neighbors. You have 15 votes to get, and they are all right here. Uh, the bylaws state that... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, 14, because she can't vote, unless there's a tie. Unless there's a tie. Um, applicants shall apply by delivering to the chairman of the council, that's victoria.nap at altadenadowncouncil.org, a letter of qualifications and an um, application fee of $35, which will be returned to you if you end up losing. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me at chris.omalley at altadenadowncouncil.org. We will have the rules, bylaws, and applications posted to our website, and keep a lookout on social media, uh, Facebook, Nextdoor, uh, for, <laughs> uh, for announcements. Uh, I think that covers it. That cover it? That covers it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, we are moving on to general public comment. Uh, before I turn it over to Councilmember Arnson, I just wanted to make a note. Um, today was Lorraine Contreras' last day here at the community center. She's being moved to the senior center, so we will have a new representative here manning the, or staffing, I should say, the community center. I just wanted to take a, a moment to thank Lorraine for her service to this council. She has been here for the entirety of my tenure on the council. I'm in my seventh or eighth year and before that. So um, we didn't have a chance to say a proper goodbye. I got the email today. I sort of knew it was in the works, but they hadn't committed to a time to move her to the senior center. So um, if you are a member of the senior center or if you are looking for Lorraine, know that she will be at the senior center and you can certainly pop by there anytime that they're open to say hello. And um, we forgot to mention this during our um, our um, events, but uh, Altadena Arts Magnet and Elliott Arts Magnet Spring Musical, Matilda Jr. is being held this coming weekend, the 19th and 20th, and the weekend after, the 26th and the 27th. All performances are at 6 p.m., with the exception of Saturday the 20th, that also has a matinee at 1. So this is a K-8 through musical performance being held in the auditorium at Elliott Arts Magnet. And there's a QR code here if you want to buy tickets. Um, these, these events coming from an art school are very elevated for what our public schools offer. And so if you have a chance, especially if you have young kids, it's a great family event. Thank you. And turning it over to Councilmember Arnzen. Thank you, Chair. Um, as a reminder, if you have a public comment card, please bring it up to either end of the tables, and we'll be sure to get you in there. Um, I'm going to call you up uh, two at a time, and then after one is gone, I'll call another person up to wait on deck just to keep things moving. Another reminder, you have two minutes. Our wonderful treasurer will also serve as timekeeper, so he'll hold up these exciting signs. Um, please don't take offense. We're just trying to move you swiftly through, but um, if you do want a response, uh, three of these five cards have information to reach back to you. Two do not. If you didn't put your contact info, Please see me afterward. I'll make sure that the appropriate council member gets your card and responds to you. Okay, so let's bring up Marianne Greider and Russell Hurst. Marianne, you'll go first. Russell, you'll hold on deck just along the wall there. Thanks, Russell. Hello, my name is Marianne Greider, and I've been a resident of Altadena since 1964. Anyway, I have lived on Ventura Street the whole time, and recently, the last couple years, we've had cars and kids on motorcycles going like 90 miles down the street. And I met Dorothy actually at an accident a few months ago or so, but I have contacted the public works, and they, they were doing a survey or something, and the, their concern is it has to have so much traffic going through or near a school. And I have been uh, going on a journey around Altadena. I've seen speed bumps on the Lothian Drive that have <laughs> like two cars a day go by. Uh, we have tons of cars going. I don't know if this is the right format, but I don't know the public works and the police 
I also did a sheriff. We need someone there. These kids are on these motor scooters flying by like at least four to five times out of the week. So I don't know, we need the sheriff, the highway patrol, someone. And I am starting a neighborhood uh, group to get petitions going with the public works because we need speed bumps. They have them at Franklin, in front of Franklin School where there's no school there anymore. So between Lincoln and Fair Oaks on Ventura, we want speed bumps. So I don't know where it goes from there, but I did put my numbers down for uh, reference for later. I do have that, Marianne. I'll be giving this to Jafina, but Pat will take note first. And next up is Russell, and then waiting on deck will be George. George Good evening, everyone. My name is Russell Hurst, and I'm a resident of Altadena. I've been living in Altadena about 27 years now, and at first it was cool. But I have a picture I want everyone to see. I'm tired of these oversized trucks on the street. You try to come out your driveway. You can't see. Sir, pass this around. That trailer has been on Altadena Drive for two years. It's a hideous trailer. And Saturday, it got hit. And myself and George was here a few months ago. We complained about it. Nothing has been done. So Saturday, I was sitting in my backyard. I heard it. I didn't think nothing, because the person it belongs to is a scrap collector. And he's out there all times of night, day and night, throwing junk on the truck. So I thought that's what it was. So my wife saw it. It got hit, OK? So I go out there, and I told the guy, you know, you did the neighborhood a favor. But you look at that picture, that trailer's still sitting there. And I don't see why it's still sitting there. It's hideous. And that's not the only oversized truck. We have a couple more down there. And like I say, you can't see coming out your driveway. And it's hideous looking. And I hope something's done about it. Thank you. Before you walk out, I just wanted you to, to have a moment with Captain Williams. The sheriff's station currently manages parking um, and definitely where oversized vehicles are concerned. And there is a process for ticketing them and towing them. Mm -hmm. So if you could give him the uh, coordinates of where this is, then he can communicate it and we can see what we can do about getting this taken care of. And then Public Works is also working on its program for beefing up parking enforcement in unincorporated LA County, including Altadena. So that's something else that's in the works. And Russell, um, I have you at 509 West Altadena. That's the south side of the street, yes, right? Uh -huh. Okay, you great. You can't miss it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I live on the north side of the street, yes. Huh? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I've got that. So I'll give this to Dorothy. Cool. All right. Thank you. Okay, George, and then on deck will be Dale, please. Well, I'm just here pretty much to echo what Russell has said. Uh, we were here in November, and we spoke about this matter. I even said it's going to be an accident. Only thing, I thank God nobody got hurt, nobody got killed, because that thing, as you can see, it is torn up. I re We requested, it has some red line, uh, the red curb painted, mm -hmm. even so that car could not, uh, so they couldn't park there, because as we were leaving this evening, some of the neighbors that couldn't, lady who just found out about it, she couldn't make it, another guy, and they're like, well, can, can, let us know because we want to get involved because the, we can't get out there. People are scared to come out in the street. You have to do like this to pull out in your car because they're flying through. We requested even a stop sign because the, the parents coming and going through the school will not let you out. You know? I, I called the sheriff's department one day, a couple times, but about three weeks ago I called when I was up to Loma Alta walking and I see the parking guy sitting over in the corner in the southeast parking lot. So I walk over and it says the parking superintendent supervisor. And I told him about this other truck that's parked across the street from that one that was always parked there. It had been sitting there about three weeks. 
It was full of trash. Okay, I'm going to get it. <laughs> and the guy told me it wasn't his job. You know, and I said, well, whose job is it? You know, it says parking. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll give that to Dot and Melissa and to Pat first. Uh, Dale, you're up, and then we've got Ben. Did we have any more come in? Nope. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dale Lacasella. I've lived in Altadena for 30 years. Um, I am the currently the co-president of the Friends of the Altadena Senior Center. Uh, as you may know, the Senior Center is, is operated by the county. They have recently put us into the Aging and Disabilities Department and all the rules have changed. However, the Friends are trying very hard to restore the Senior Center, get activities going, get uh, things going that we're allowed to do within these very narrow rules. And we would really like support from the community to get the seniors. There's over 3,000 seniors in Altadena that are over 65, not counting the ones that are younger than that, but qualify for the Senior Center. Uh, we would really like to have some help get the word out there, we're there, we're working, we're making an effort, things are gonna get better. There's tremendous resources there. We wanna help. We wanna, the, they, the YWCA provides lunches, 250. They have maybe, on a good day, they have 22 people. They used to have 150. This, it's a resource that the community can use, and we need all the help we can get to publicize it. So anybody who wants to come by, visit, we'll take you around, we'll talk to you, and whatever we can do would be appreciated. Thank you. Before you leave, yes. will you just give the hours of the Senior Center and please and advise everyone the age that you can become a member and what is required? You can, require, you can become a member at 55, all you have to do is sign up, it's free. If you want to join the Friends of the, of the Senior Center, it's $25 a year. Um, and they open at uh, nine o'clock in the morning. They have, uh, we have dance classes, we have exercise classes. Um, we have, excuse me, clubs. We're not allowed to have classes anymore. <laughs> and we're working on some other, they, ha they have arts and crafts, they have sewing, uh, all kinds of, uh, we're, we're working up a speakers bureau now to have uh, programs. We're gonna be doing some free trips uh, to various places. So anybody is welcome. Uh, if you wanna have the lunch, you sign up. You have to sign up separately for that. And it's 250 or whatever you can afford or nothing. And they, you know, they're reasonably decent lunches. And for some people, I know that's all they get during the day. So we want to really encourage people to show up and to participate. I wanted to say that I know that you were greatly impacted by COVID-19 and being closed we for closed as long. We were closed for two years. And, yep. it, and then uh, Marilyn Commodore, who was the president of the Friends for a number of years, passed away. And that kind of put everybody in a tailspin. But we're back and we're working hard and we appreciate all the support we can get from anywhere in the community. I just wanted to say that we saw that the calendar of events had been posted to next door, and then that got shared more widely with the community. So that was the first time we've seen a calendar in a very long time. We're working on it. We're yep. working on it. And uh, we will be doing some more activities. Uh, we're going to start having a free movie once a month. We'll have a free movie day with popcorn. And... Um, we have a trip planned to uh, Alvera Street. We have a trip planned to the Broad Museum, and those are free. We're only allowed to do free trips, so we're getting very creative. And uh, I just, uh, any, any public publicizing of the events or of the uh, center that you can do is really appreciated. So we meet every Tuesday, every Tuesday, every third Tuesday of the month uh, here at seven o'clock. And I'm going to have council member Arnzen reach out to you because we should have you on our schedule regularly I, as we do I, with public. I was thinking of that, parks. but I was going to wait and talk to him later. Okay. But that's so super. he'll reach out to you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. Yes. Do you have a flyer of kind of the general things that you're offering that maybe we can post on the website? 
We uh, not at not at this point, but we're working up to one because, as I said, we've had to get creative about what we can and can't do. But the monthly calendar certainly we can provide for you. Anything else? Thank you, Dale. Thank you. I'm going to give this to Pat, and then I'll take it back. Uh, ben, you're up. Hey, I'm Ben Zobrist. Um, been in Altadena since my parents brought me home from Glendale Adventist Hospital. So grew up here. Um, was away in Washington for a little bit, but I'm back now. And so I'm grateful to be here. Um, I just wanted to ask if there's a way to donate to the Altadena Town Council via Zelle or uh, Venmo or the way that like we give my generation. Um, and so as well as folks who are on the video, um, you know, I think it'd be great to have an opportunity to, um, to give like through Zelle or Venmo or PayPal. So that's just my request to the council. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, it's complicated. It's complicated, but, but you gave us some contact information, Ben. I'm surprised you didn't leave us your email because isn't that, you have his email. Okay, because I think that uh, Council Member O'Malley could respond to you about why that is the way that it is. Okay, I think that wraps us up for tonight. Say it again. <laughs> uh, motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Second. Thank you, everybody, and thank you again to Pasadena Media. And I do have chocolate chip cookies up here. If you're still here and you want a homemade chocolate chip cookie that I made today, it has no nuts. You are welcome to come up. Okay. I'll be there, so I'll be around. Just send me out.